So there's been a lot of talk lately about whether you play by feel or whether you play by technology, by data. So which is it for you to get better in golf, feel or data? Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode, show, of Data Access Golf, the podcast. Thank you for taking the time to join me. Always appreciate it. I feel like we're becoming friends. So this time of year, right, you've got the PGA show going on. You had like the two days when all the instructors got together and pontificated about what's going on with coaching. And a lot of what came out on the other side of that, I I heard on uh, Michael Breed's show, and then I've heard a little bit on Inside the Ropes, their show, and uh, then a little bit on some other shows here and there, a little bit on the Golf Channel as they start showing some of the new stuff, which is always kind of fun to see, all the new, you know, I'm always geeking out about the new technologies and the new apparatuses that we can use to try to, you know, develop our golf swings a little bit more. And hopefully I'm always looking for stuff that gives accurate feedback because going back to the parable of the bicycle, the more rapid and more instant that feedback is, then the better we can get at golf. So whatever it is, whatever provides you the most accurate and instant feedback is really, really good for your golf swing. Okay. That all being said, there has been so many discussions about whether you should use technology and whether you should use feel. And one of the instructors, and I don't want to start naming names and making people feel bad, but one of them was talking about how he believed it was on Michael Breed's show, and it was on Monday, and he was talking about how he believes that technology is not a way to learn golf and that golf needs to be that um, ball flight never lies. Boy, that is such an incorrect statement. Ball flight, ball, ball flight is one of the biggest liars at all. You can put in a completely atrocious swing and hit a really nice ball. Okay, so ball flight, hitting a good solid shot does not necessarily mean that you have a good golf swing. It means that you timed everything up and you happened to find the center of the club face and, and, and happened to hit a good shot. That's it. That is totally it. And so if your golf swing is reliant on timing, if your golf swing is, I mean, if you're in poor balance and you just happen to pull one together every once in a while, that does not mean that you have a good golf swing. So this instructor is 100% totally incorrect. Now, you can eventually, once your golf swing is in place, once your golf swing is solid, then the golf ball starts telling the truth. Then you can trust ball flight. But when your golf swing sucks and you hit a good golf shot, it means nothing. It means you got lucky. And and playing golf by trying to get lucky every single shot is a horrible way to play golf. You can't break 90 that way. So all this technology and all all of this is making it possible for us to do it the right way. And I'm tired of being told, and I get told this a lot, and I guess because I'm becoming sort of a loud mouth and getting it out there that, that we really should be focusing on data, I'm getting some pushback from people that are a little more traditional, that are a little more old school, that, that I'm the idiot. And I, I have no problem with being the idiot. But in this particular case, I'm not the idiot. We've got data to show that when you do things a certain way, you can improve your golf swing. And that's why all these players who do this for a living have surrounded themselves with coaches that understand track man and understand foresight and understand, you know, the putting caddies and understand all this technology because it works because they can track and improve their game, because they're getting the instant feedback they need to get better. Okay, so again, if you have a coach that sits there and watches you hit golf balls, and when you hit a good one, says to himself, my work is done here, that's crap. Fire that guy. 
that guy's terrible. Whoever this guy was on my, again, I don't remember his name. And I, even if I did, I wouldn't say it. But he has no idea what he's talking about. Technology is the way to get better and get better quickly. There's part of me that feels like all this pushback. I mean, when TrackMan first came out, I remember some of the talking heads on Golf Channel really, really being upset when the ball flight laws came out and say, no, it's not right. That's, you know, you can't hit a draw that way. You can't hit a fade that way. That's not, those can't, that's not the physics behind it because that's not how it feels to me when I play golf. Well, they were completely wrong. It's taken, what, five, 10 years for them to finally, finally get it through their thick skulls that it's just science, it's just physics, it's data. You can't argue with it. It just is the way it is. And it doesn't matter what they think, right? So the ball flight laws are solid. That the way you, where your ball starts is controlled by the face. And what your ball is doing as far as shape is the relationship between the face and the path of the club. And that is it, folks. Okay? I mean, lie angle affects it a little bit, but that's, that's it. I mean, that's it. It's simple science. And so when we get really, really good at understanding that and making sure that our face angle is, is set and that our swing path is set and we, we know that and we get the feedback and we dial in our swings so we know what our swings are doing. And the four lines of the golf swing, again, using my terminology for swing bite, but when the four, the four lines of the swing bite say that you are on the target line, you will play really, really good golf. Now, yes, there's other things going on. There's shifting of your weight. There's, there's um, rotation of the hips, all of that. But we're doing that together with technology. So we are, we are blending this feel with technology. And what types of feels are we using? We are, we are using technology to figure out which feels are real and which feels are fake and can't be trusted. All right. So my next sort of thing that I've been, I've been getting hit with a lot. Uh, people say to me, you've never been uh, inside the ropes, to use that term, right? I've never played in professional golf tournaments. And they're 100% correct. I haven't. Okay, I'm just a data guy. I, I, I like data. I geek out on technology. I love it. Okay? So I'm not. I am not a super good player. I'm an okay player. Um, but I've learned from being a really, really bad player to become a decent player. Right, handicap, you know, between zero and five. And that's, that's good enough for me. I don't want to play any more than that. I, I don't want to play on tour. I don't want to try to qualify for the Champions Tour. I have no interest in any of that. Golf for me is, is something to investigate and get better at just for me, just for fun, just for hanging out with the guys. And I think most of us are that way. Golf is something where we want to go out and perform well and do well and enjoy it. But that's it. We're not looking for a paycheck. It's going to be about improvement. And I think that that's where we all as amateurs are. Where we have no dreams of being professional golfers. So I get tired of being told by those who have played golf professionally that somehow or another I'm not qualified to talk about the golf swing. And yet I know lots of heart surgeons who have never had a heart attack. So I, I get tired of that argument. You know, if I ever have the conversation to talk with a Justin Thomas or a Dustin Johnson or whatever about their golf swings, one of the worst questions you can ask them is, how does it feel to hit a draw? draw? How does it feel when you're chipping? What are you feeling? Because we've shown time and time again that trying to communicate a feel to another person in the golf swing just doesn't work. The golf swings, as we swing our own golf swing, that is occurring very differently for us than it does for anybody else. And I, I came to this realization when I was trying to get people to swing, use the swing bite and swing a certain way. And everything that I was explaining to them, everything that I experienced when I, swing a, when I was swinging a golf club with the swing bite was not working for them. Some things would like taking it outside. Well, taking it outside to me feels way different than taking it outside to somebody else. The general idea is the same. But, you know, for me to take it out the right amount, for somebody else to take it out the right amount could be totally different based on body type, based on flexibility, based on a whole lot of things. So trying to learn the golf swing based on somebody else's feel and having them trying to explain that to you is a total joke. 
One of the coolest experiences I had when I was trying to, when I was trying to feel what impact felt like, you know, as far as I, I was trying to figure out what kind of tension should be in my hands and wrists and arms when I came into impact. And it was really, really confusing me. I was having a hard time sort of grasping this. Fortunately, I was in Carmel, California, working with Fred Shoemaker and our little mastery group. And I called Fred Shoemaker over and I said, Fred, I am not getting this. This is, I am not getting this whole, oh, I'm having a hard time with the release. And so Fred did something so cool is he basically, we kind of got situated and, you know, it was a little personal and whatever. And we got a little close, but he took his left hand and put it on the club and had me hold on to the club with my right hand. And he just had me follow along as he said, this is what my release feels like. Okay. So he was doing his release, but he was allowing me to experience it in my own way on what that felt like. It solved everything for me. I'm like, oh, that's it. And then we switched. It was his right hand and my left hand. And he did it again. This is my release. And I could kind of go, okay, that's release. I get it. I experienced Fred's released release myself one hand at a time, but I still got to experience it. Fred could have sat there all day and told me what his release felt like trying to use all the words in the dictionary. And I would have never got it. But when I got in and got to experience it, it was perfect. So a PGA tour professional telling you how to do anything from their personal experience and what it feels like to them, it just doesn't work. So to have somebody tell me, and again, you can tell I'm a little hot, but have somebody tell me because they're a better player than I am and they've played in more professional tournaments than I have, that somehow or another they understand the golf swing better than I do is total and utter crap. And I don't buy it and I never will. So that's my point of today is like, look, when you're going out and you're learning golf and all this, this, there's going to be so much cool technology coming out from this PGA show. There is every single year. And so I don't know if it's going to be the swing bite for you or the blast, or if you're going to, you know, pony up whatever it is now for a track man or whatever it is. There's a bunch of technology out there and it, and this technology can make your game better. But it's about making sure that you get the feedback that you need to make sure that you're swinging the golf club the right way and then learning what that feels like to you. So we use technology and data and all this really cool stuff to put us in a place to experience what a really, really good golf swing feels like to us. And it's ours. And it's, it's what we experience a good golf swing to be. And that's it. And the more we do it and the more we try to do it, the better we'll get at it. And you will learn your golf swing. Then when you go out on the course and you know your golf swing, you have all the confidence in the world. You trust in the real feels and you know which feels completely don't mean anything to your golf swing and you go out and play golf. When you have a swing and you trust your swing, then ball flight is telling the truth. And you can diagnose what's going on in your golf swing based on ball flight because it's not some sort of big, huge timing mess that gets lucky every once in a while. It's a consistent golf swing that you know, trust, and then you can make these tiny little adjustments based on ball flight because your swing is pretty much okay and you've got confidence in it. That's the key. That's, that's totally the key. Technology to fix our golf swing and then using ball flight to adjust our golf swing a little bit while we're playing to play wonderful golf. And these feels come from doing the work and having the feedback. And doing it that way is going to improve your golf game so much more quickly than if you sat around and read a million golf digest articles and listened to a hundred thousand professionals tell you what it feels like to hit a freaking draw. Get to learn your own golf swing by using feedback. Just embrace it. Get it. If you want to learn and listen to everybody else, it's great fun. I love listening to how everybody else experiences a golf swing, but it's not the way I experience mine. And it's not the way you experience yours. Not every time, not all the time. Trust in yourself. Embrace this thing. And this is a cool journey to go on. You're going to know your golf swing and it's going to feel, it's going to feel like a warm blanket to you once you understand what that is. You can get back to it quickly. And technology helps us do that so much more quickly. Golf, learning golf and becoming super good at golf is so much easier now than it was 10 years ago. And going from somebody who shoots 90 to somebody who shoots 70 is possible within a 12-month period now.
if you're willing to embrace it. Getting good at golf is not a mystery anymore. The mystery in, in this whole thing is gone. Is there a lot of moving parts? Yeah. Is there a lot of stuff that we have to work on and get better at? You bet. But the technology is there to give us the feedback to do it. So you don't have to start golf and be horrible for the next 10 to 20 years. I think a beginner can start golf and with the right tools can be super good. I mean, shooting in the 80s within 12 months, even within a summer. My kids went from basically beginners to making the golf team in basically a summer. Look for all the technology. Read about all the technology. I'm going to talk about all the technology I can find. We've got a lot of great golf club reviews and all that stuff coming up. A lot of really, really cool podcasts are coming up. And, uh, and obviously, we've got golf again tomorrow. So that's going to be awesome as well. So um, pay attention. Look at all the technology. And we'll have some more discussions about it. Remember, better data means better golf. Because it means you're going to really learn a good golf swing and what it feels like to you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com. And we'll see you on the next episode.